strand inhibitors. Methylacetamide. Methylacetamide. Okay, good. You're using the common system. In the IAPAC system, this would be methylethanamide, but it's probably more common to call it methylacetamide. But we have to say where this methyl group is, we have to say N methylacetamide to show that the methyl group is on the nitrogen there. Yeah, this is the name that they used in the uh, lecture notes. I suppose IUPAC would be N-ethylethanamide, but the name they used in the lecture notes was N-methylacetamide, so that looks like the conventional way that this is named. This one's a little trickier, a little bit different. Let's start by naming the main chain here. What would be the name of the main, the main chain? Um, acetamide. How many carbons are in the main chain? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, for, form, formide. Formamide. Formamide. That's right. It's actually only one carbon, just the carbonyl carbon on the main chain. So that would be formamide. N-dimethyl? Say again? Is it N-dimethyl? Excellent. You almost got it. So you got the dimethyl. So we continue just treating these like substituents. But you know that if there's two substituents, you use the prefix di. Okay. And the locator is N. You've only left one thing out, which is something people oftentimes forget. If you have two substituents, you have to give the location for both of the substituents. So this would be NN dimethyl. You might have seen that system with regular naming. Sometimes we would call things 2,2 dimethyl or 2,3 dimethyl. It's hard for people to remember that they need two locators and the prefix di. We need both of these to indicate that there's two of these. Of course, you'll see that in the, in the answer choices that this is multiple choice. This would be NN dimethyl formamide. The IAPAC name would be methanamide, but that's not what they used in the lecture notes. It's more common to use formamide. NN dimethyl formamide. Good. similar basis to this one. It sounded right. Could you, could you say that again? Uh, N uh, ethyl N methyl propanamide. Excellent. Very good. That's right. This is all one word. because the main chain is three carbons. And then now there's two substituents here. So we need locators for both of them. And we put them in alphabetical order. Very good. Uh, I suppose theoretically you could call the ethyl group an acetyl group, and this a formal group. But actually, I don't think people, I don't think that's actually very conventional. We've been seeing that we've been using the common roots for the main chain, but we don't use the common roots as much for these substituents. So I think this would be the, the name that people would usually use. And that's good. 
Okay, so there's actually a lot of ins and outs for amides because there could be substituents of the nitrogen here, but now we've seen how to deal with that. Again, the most important thing is the suffix, which is very easy to remember. The suffix is just amide. Let's draw the structure of this molecule, N-cyclohexyl acetamide. Let's try drawing that structure. So piece by piece, acet means two carbons, and that's the main chain. It's an amide, so we put in the nitrogen. We know there's a cyclohexyl group on the nitrogen. Now you'd want to make it, well, this is just multiple choice. I guess it doesn't matter. But uh, if it weren't, you'd want to make it clear that there's no extra carbons here. So you'd want to draw a straight line here. Um, otherwise, it might, there's, looks like, might look like there's an extra carbon here. So this carbon here is directly connected to the nitrogen. Uh, now here's something else that you would see uh, on the multiple choice test. Do you remember? How many bonds does a neutral nitrogen usually have? How many? Three. Which means this isn't right unless we put in an extra hydrogen. I think you might have left out that hydrogen there. That's a mistake I make a lot when I'm putting things on the board. I don't put the right number of hydrogens on the nitrogens. Uh, but we have to get three bonds total for this to be neutral. This only has one substituent, not two. So it still has one hydrogen. I think this is the only big mistake you make. Except for leaving out the hydrogen, I think you got this uh, exactly right. And cyclohexyl acetamide. Good. One methylpropyl methanoate. Let's try naming that one. Uh, let's try drawing the structure of this. One methylpropyl methanoate. That's a good start. Meth means one carbon. And you remember that OA is an ester. And then the tricky part is figuring out what to put on this oxygen based on this one methyl propyl here. Didn't seem too happy about that, but you figured it out. That's right. You worked it out. Good. You did work it out. So first of all, suppose they had just said propyl. Well, if they just said propyl, we would just draw this, propyl. But what we have here is not only are we treating this like a substituent, we're treating it like a branched substituent. This is the nomenclature for branched substituents. Not only is there a propyl group here, but the propyl group has another substituent on it. 
Where is the methyl group? On the number one carbon. You figured out that we would start the numbering on the substituent closest to the oxygen. So this is the number one carbon over here. Ah, that's right. Well, you, you're, you made the right guess there. Um, this is the number one carbon in the main chain, but this is the number one carbon in the substituent. So this would be one methyl propyl, a propyl group with a methyl substituent on it at the number one position. So you work that out. A lot of people would have trouble with this methanoate, but you figured it out. It's simply an ester with only the carbonyl carbon on the main chain. Yes? 